Well, in many ways, the maker movement has democratized innovation. Thanks to new maker spaces popping up around the country, it's gotten much easier for most anyone to take an idea and turn it into reality with the right motivation. In fact, our next guest says entrepreneurs can cut their development costs by 98% through the use of a shared space platform like his tech shops popping up around the country. Mark Hatch is the CEO of Tech Shop and the author of the Maker Movement Manifesto and was the headliner at this year's Oklahoma Business Roundtable. So Mark, you called the Maker Movement a revolution. What's enabled it to happen? Well, it's primarily being driven by uh, easy to use, uh, low cost, very powerful machines. And so what that means um, for an average maker is the cost to produce that first unit has come down by 98% in the last decade. And the um, ease of use of the tools are such that with just a little bit of dedication, they can now actually learn how to use the tools themselves. And that is, anytime you take a, an economic good and you reduce the cost by almost two orders of magnitude, you are now operating in a new reality. What's really powerful about this is that new reality is another industrial revolution, or what I like to call the creative revolution. This is the laser cutter. Um, I'm from San Francisco. We call this the gateway drug. So if you're going to be a pusher, you want to do something, you want to give somebody a taste of something that's powerful, incredibly easy to use, and cheap. That's this tool. We routinely see people take this $75 class and launch businesses in weeks. Not months, not years, in weeks. This is an incredibly useful and powerful tool. This is one of my favorites. This is a water jet. This thing cuts through five inches thick of anything on the planet. Concrete, granite, titanium, cows, pigs, dogs, birthday cakes, you name it, it cuts right through it. We teach you how to use this tool in three hours. Complete woodworking shop. We often get excited about the metal working because you haven't had access to it, but we have ripped out the woodworking shops out of most of the high schools and junior highs across the U.S at exactly the wrong time in human history when we're adding computers to it and making it easy to use. We have people that learn how to use the, the CNC shop bot that launch companies that are now worth tens of millions of dollars after just learning three or four of these kind of basic tools. You have the cool machines in the tech shop, sure, yeah. but you also have cool people there. Well, that's actually the magic. So um, I like to say that we have the machines there as the honey to attract uh, the bees. Um, and so, yeah, well, you need access to the tools, but just as importantly, or more importantly, you need access to the knowledge base that's embedded in every major city so that you're closer to the solution set that you need to make your product, your dream, come true. So we have what we call dream consultants, and their job is to understand who is in the building at the moment, and they're there, you know, 40 hours a week, five days, and so forth. So they know what the community is capable of. So if you run into a problem and say, I'm not sure exactly how to do this, we go, well, Bob does, and Jane does, and Jill does. Let me introduce you to them. So we don't, we don't rely on accidental interactions. We actually intervene and get you to the knowledge that's already embedded in the community to be able to move your project forward. And that's the magic. When you can engage the creative community in Oklahoma City, in St. Louis, in, in Brooklyn, in San Francisco, and get them meeting and interacting with one another at the levels where they're having issues and problems, Again, it's another revolution that happens because you're connecting, it's like a superconductor for creatives. But what we're actually doing at the core, we get distracted by the tools because they're kind of sexy and they're kind of fun. But that, isn't, that is not what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is to attract a core group in the community that is passionate about making things. And the real key is to get about 500 to 800 members in one community who are showing up three to five times a month with their instructors and other folks that are hanging out. And what happens is it, the spaces move from a place that people have to go to get their work done to a place they want to, do, want to go to to get their work done. And magic happens. In San Francisco, we have professors from Stanford and Berkeley. We have professionals from Method, which is a big design firm, Frog Design. We have designers from Levi's, from Macy's. We have students from the, from the uh, local art school. We have kids as young as 14 years old up there using laser cutters. We'll have 30 to 50 people any given night bouncing off one another and helping one another achieve their dreams. That's our tagline, build your dreams here. The objective is to build the community. The tools are the honey that attracts the hive. But once you've got one of these spaces in a major city, watch out. So you, you have the, the cool machines, you have the cool people, 
Someone comes at you with a great idea, now where do you get the investment? Well, see, this is, again, something that's happened in the last decade. Um, a couple of big changes have occurred. The first, of course, is crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. So Kickstarter and Indiegogo are now the, uh, the best on-ramp for being able to take your crazy idea. At least that's what an angel group might look at it. Like if you're a 24-year-old kid trying to launch a lamp company, most angel teams wouldn't invest in it. But a Kickstarter campaign raised $480,000 for that idea, which enabled him to quit his job, hire the people needed, reduce the item to um, a, actually a product that he's now selling millions of dollars with. Again, 10 years ago, somebody like that didn't have access to the tools and didn't have access to the community and didn't have access to the financing. Now they do. And then a little more technically, the Jobs Act is lowering the threshold to be able, the Jobs Act that was passed by Congress mm -hmm. um, two years ago, and the SEC is now kind of chunking through and, and making it legal. So you can now tell investors publicly, you can actually advertise that you're raising money to, to launch your company, which by the way, three years ago was illegal. Like for the last 80 years, if you had a revolutionary idea, but you didn't have access to friends and family that had capital, you couldn't get it launched. Now you can. So the whole economic layer has also changed, which is, again, why this is truly a revolution. Tools are easy to use. They're cheap. You've got access to capital. You've got access to knowledge. Really, the only thing that's holding you back is your desire. This is what happens when you give the creative class access to the tools of the Industrial Revolution. They come in and build the world's fastest electric motorcycle from the ground up. They didn't have access. They, could, they would have cost them a quarter million, a half million, maybe a million dollars to build it. They did it for under $50,000. They came in and they used every one of our tools to be able to build the thing. It's, it's amazing. It did 218 miles an hour on the Bonneville Salt Flats. This thing was so good. It won Pikes Peak this last year. And not only did it beat all the electric motorcycles, it destroyed the entire field. When was the last time you saw a professional race and the second place finisher came across the line 20 seconds later. Britt Morin is a, uh, she's like the Silicon Valley version of Martha Stewart. She came in, uh, learned how to use all the tools, launched a crafting company targeted at women. She's now on the Today Show like, uh, like twice a month, three times uh, a month, learned everything that she needed. She just raised, I mean, look at her, she's like, what, 28? 28 million dollars in her Series B. Who says you need to be a Facebook app to be able to engage people and make money and create jobs? I certainly don't. This is David Lang. He came in and came up to me the very first day he was on site. He says, Mark, I don't know how to make anything. He says, well, that's not true. I'm really good with PowerPoint. I'm sorry. PowerPoint is not making something. Um, PowerPoint's entertaining, and you might convince some people something. So he came in and said, I'm going to become a Maker Pro. I've been to the Maker Fair, and I want to become a Maker Pro. I'm going to take all of your classes, which he did, like 35 classes. Nine months later, he launched an underwater robot company. He picked up the skills that he needed, attracted the community of people around him, to launch the largest open access remotely operated vehicle company on the planet. He sold over 1,500 of these. He's doing millions of dollars in sales, and he picked up the skills that he needed to do that in nine months. He developed the network that he needed to be able to take it and get a Kickstarter campaign in about four months. We are living in a completely different world than we ever have. We have access to the tools, community, and knowledge to make all kinds of things. So this is another one of my favorites. Max came in, one of the other parts of the ecosystem that's come along is, this, is Kickstarter and Indiegogo. I actually think that to get out of some programs, we should require the kids to try to launch an Indiegogo or a, or a Kickstarter campaign. So I ran into Max and um, I asked him, yeah, what are you doing? It's like, well, I'm trying to build this lamp. It's like, cool, what's your strategy? It's like, well, I'm gonna raise $60,000 on Kickstarter to launch my company. I was like, Max, $60,000, this is about three years ago, $60,000 would put you in the top 10% of all projects ever launched on Kickstarter. Like, can't you do it for five grand or 10 grand? He's like, no, and he showed me his Gantt chart and he'd done all of his homework. It's gonna be 60 grand. I said, okay, Max, do a really good video uh, because it's gonna be really hard. He raised $480,000. <laughs> He quit his job, hired five people, and created a manufacturing uh, facility to be able to do this. He was on Shark Tank last year. All five sharks competed for his business. 
This kid is about 24 years old. He's never owned a company his entire life. He's never launched a company. He has no absolute business or right to launch a, a, a lamp company. No angel group on the planet would have funded this kid, but yet Kickstarter did, and he proved all of us naysayers wrong. He's got a multi-million dollar business. He's got a shark as one of his investors, and he's now he's getting distributed all over. It's very exciting. So the maker movement is making millionaires. It is. Is it making our economy different? Uh, actually, quite tangibly in a very specific way. So Square, the um, you know the little white uh, dongle that goes on Something the end, we see end all the time. came out of our uh, mid peninsula location. Uh, James uh, McKelvey and Jack Dorsey came up with it, and you, you'd think, well, how did that have an impact on the economy? They estimated in August of 2012. Companies that were starting to use that device had to hire 35,000 new employees. I believe that the, the money supply, the velocity of the money supply increased because of that little device that was created by a, a former glass blower out of St. Louis. This is what happens when you can give people access to these kinds of tools. So what happens is we've discovered cities, companies, and educators love this. It helps to catalyze innovation districts. It increases innovation and employee engagement. It improves educational outcomes. Access to tools is absolutely everything. So where do we go from here? Where do you go from here? Well, you know, my objective is to try to get maker spaces in every major city, whether they're tech shops or somebody else's, I don't care. Our mission is to help drive global innovation by engaging, enabling, and empowering people to build their dreams. And we're operating in an entirely new environment. The thing that's holding us back is the lack of maker spaces across the U.S. and around the world. Mark Hatch, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Rob. Thanks. Thank you. Now I have Mark Hatch's entire talk to Oklahoma's Business Roundtable streaming on our website, and I think it's one you're going to enjoy. To see that, just head over to OKHorizon.com and look under our value-added section.